specific interest in plants. Because if you have more interest in Ecuador, you don't want to stay with gringos, you want to stay with Ecuador. Mm -hmm. And where, what's the access, or where are you flying to? Quito. Yeah. And then there's a truck bus out past There's buses, yeah. A couple of buses. That's what we do. We actually just... Kind of a challenge to two get to. Two years ago, we got yeah. a car for the first time and a uh -huh. washing machine. <laughs> because you had electricity also Because we got electricity. And money. <laughs> You guys uh, sell at a market? Is that how you sustain yourself? No, we don't sell fruit hardly. Sometimes the neighbors come over uh -huh. and pick fruit to sell. Okay. I have the seed business. That's how we support Oh, ourselves. got it. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your, your seeds are more mostly dried, right? I'm sorry. Well, not necessarily. Some seeds you can't dry, huh? Cacao seeds, if you dry, they're dead. And there's many in the tropical rainforest. Maybe half the seeds, if you're dry, they're dead. you got to plant them right away. When I send them, I have to pack them up in damp sawdust or sphagnum or something. Mm -hmm. to send. And they often germinate on the way. And they often die on the way. Aside from the toucans and the squirrels, what other critters do you have to deal with in competition? Well, that are a problem. Squirrels is a big one for sure. There's uh, kinkajous. Are a nocturnal mammal. It sounds like you know about kinkajous. They're arboreal, nocturnal arboreal mammals. Really cute, really good looking. <laughs> kind of like a com cross between a cat and a and a monkey. But were they vicious? No. Well, like vicious? no, they're really cute, and people sometimes get babies, you know, and keep them as pets. But they're nocturnal. So at night they're up and around and jumping on your bed and jumping on the roof of the house and nobody keeps them for pets very long. <laughs> I worked at a zoo and we had a agouti and a kinkajou. Uh -huh. um, yeah, they're really cute. Nice, huh? but the kinkajou was kind of, I mean, it was a good thing that he slept during the day so I could get in there and clean, <laughs> but if I really woke him up, he would get yeah, uh -huh. try and bite me and swipe me. <laughs> what kind of squirrels are they? Red squirrel. Two different species, actually. But they're very common. They do a lot of damage in the chocolate, for example, the cacao. They really open up the pods and eat a couple seeds and then go away. In Brazil, it was a real challenge to find any fruits on the forest floor because the rodents and other little animals have already eaten everything. I mean, how do you deal with that at your own place? How do you manage to, or well, maybe it's not a first summer. You can pick the fruits too, huh? Uh huh. But yeah, the agoutis particularly that I showed you, they really eat seeds. They love seeds. Okay. Not so much the pulp of the fruits, but the seeds. So most of the trees, do you have to climb them and pick the fruits well, a lot to of get? Them, or I have a picker or stick, you know, that I just mm -hmm. knock them down with. And yeah, I climb trees pretty much too. Once they fall on the ground, they're pretty much. On or are no, you able no, to collect? It really depends on the fruits. You know, some yeah. of them are, but others are not at all. Some of them you can pick a bit immature and they're hard and bring into the house to ripen. As an American, can you own the land outright? Yep. You know, you have to get uh, uh, some kind of a visa to be able to keep living there. Mm -hmm. for sure. But owning land is not so much of a problem. Okay. And it's true, in much of the world, that's, that's not so easy, huh? Right. But Ecuador is kind of unusual because they don't have a currency. Everything is in dollars. Mm. Oh. So I, I found that kind of bizarre, using American dollar in really? a foreign country. They only have a few coins, but you hardly see their currency. It just changed. Like in 2000, there was a big financial crisis. It changed the dollar. It has some advantages. It means they're they're not in control of the money supply, and so there's very little inflation. You know, typically third world countries they print a lot of money so the government can spend it, and right. that causes a lot of inflation. And in Ecuador, that meant that every few months the prices had to go up. The government had to raise the bus prices, and then there were protests in the street, and you couldn't get on the bus, and 
Whereas now that problem has kind of gone away. Wow. They don't have to raise the bus prices. There's no one, there's not much inflation, not compared to before anyway. Mm -hmm. So they're not thinking about changing back. Even though, you know, the, the, the new government is pretty nationalistic, but they're not going to change back to the Ecuadorian money. <laughs> it works too well to use the yeah, dollar. Yeah, yeah, right. huh. Do you sell seeds for everything that you grow? No. No. But it's on my web page what I sell. Yeah, I'll look at that when I get it. Uh -huh. yeah. what, what do you sell the most of, maybe? Um, seeds. Oh, that's hard to say. A lot of them. Yeah, different ones. And sell them all over the world. You know, people in Europe have greenhouses and in the States. So people from all over buy them, really. But in small quantity, you know, I sell little packages in the mail. I mean, I'm not exporting lots of seeds. Is it a pain to send them to Hawaii? Yeah. 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 You can get, one can get in Hawaii, people living in Hawaii can get a USDA small lots of seed permit. Yeah. And then to do it legally, what I do is send the seeds to you with your permit, uh -huh. mailing sticker. I mail the USDA, they inspect them and send them on to you. And that usually works, you know, it takes a little extra time, which is kind of hard on seeds sometimes. Yeah. How do you choose what you, which seeds you sell? Do you try to specialize mostly in the uh, South American stuff? I notice you don't sell a lot of Asian things. So do you, do you try to focus on a certain Not type really. of thing or really. whatever grows best for you? Or? Yeah, but also what's fairly easy to sell is seeds and what I think your people are going to want. But there's a fair bunch of Asian stuff on one page, I would say. Some you stop mentioning what, where you go to get that Permit, small. Yeah, I think you can look look online. USDA APHIS, they have a website. It's called a small seed yeah, lot permit. Too. Yeah, there's an office. And they're very helpful, very nice. There's an office on Lonnie Kala Street. Yeah. Will you send directly to to an address? And skip the yeah, I'll do that if you're willing to take the risk. Yeah, they might not show up. That's right. You know, another way, sort of an intermediate way to do it is to get the permit, and then I mail direct to you with the permit inside the envelope. Okay. And they the don't like that anymore. Sort of, hmm? They will confiscate it now if you do that. Stuff has been getting through. I've been sending stuff to Frankie. Well, it depends on the inspector now. There, there's some that but are... you're not inspecting. Just oh, yeah. But they, if they open it and you have the permit inside and the sticker inside, they can confiscate it now. They want you to mail it directly to USDA. The thing is, they that open it, it's not USDA, it's the the border patrol of the Homeland Customs Security. Border. That's who's looking at the packages. And they don't care about seeds. And if they do open and see a USDA permit to it, I figure maybe well, they just send it on. Technically, if they open it and there's seeds inside, they have to send it to USDA. Mm -hmm. they, they are not able to inspect it themselves. They're not trained to do that. Yeah. But I don't think they do that very much. Well, they do send it to USDA. So, um, do you have pictures of your canyon with the waterfall? Or yeah, those? you missed the starting, huh? Oh. Uh, yeah, sorry, I can't lie. Wow, beautiful. So this is, oh wow, that's nice. That's our number one. And you said there are not many places that have waterfalls or swimming holes in there? Oh, well, no, there are. You know, this is a, it's a mountainous area. We're in the foothills. Okay, because you, like hmm? you said you're the only one with a canyon. You said you're the only one with a canyon and a swimming hole. No, she's talking about when you were talking about the word waikuyaku, and that's mm -hmm. the only one on the website. And you would think there's more, because it means a canyon, yeah. that's what the comment I think water. she's referring okay, to. but there are lots of waterfalls in the area. There are lots of waterfalls in the area. Yes. So that's in your backyard? That's nice. That's, yeah, that's like three minutes from the house. Oh, I like Actually, the, there's uh, a little more of a story than that. And I saw you did some construction, looks like cob or... Yeah, that was, that's that cob. My wife. Okay. Cob, that's pretty good. And, um... How does it do with the wet, the heavy wet? Is it fine with the moisture? The cob? Yeah. Yeah. 
Seems to be okay. It hadn't been up for very long. How long? Uh, uh, three or four years. That's long enough, mm -hmm. and it's doing fine. Is it real buggy? No, I wouldn't say that. There are bugs. You know, in the in the in the equatorial tropical forest, some areas have a lot of bugs, and some do not. When I was there, it was incre incredibly non-buggy. I mean, there's a lot more bugs here. Really? The only thing they had that was a little bit disturbing was a stinging nettle, for me anyway. Stinging nettle in a lot of places. And not as much. Oh, okay. Most people that come there for the first time are bothered by bugs. We are not, you know, we are short sleeved and don't notice any Most people are somewhat bothered by bugs for a while. And you get used to Yeah, after about a month. So do your children live there? No, not anymore. Where do they live? They went to study in the States and they got partners in state. Oh, got it. Got it. You know, they love to come visit. You know, they grew up there. Must be fun. It's friendly to come back and visit. It's a great way to grow up. Yeah, they appreciate it. That's my son. That's the agouti, huh? Is that the main problem as far as chewing on your fruits? Well, yeah. They're very abundant. And yeah, they, they eat a lot of seeds that are on the ground, but only they don't climb trees. Only the ones that are on the ground. <coughs> you don't try to trap them or control them in any no. way? You don't eat them? Well, people around there eat them, for sure. Yeah, it's interesting. When we first got to this area, you know, this, this summer walk in, everybody hunted. And now most people do not hunt. Partly because there's not so many animals, of course. But partly because people, you know, these are regular campesino neighbors, have realized that, you know, the animals are kind of neat. It'd be kind of neat if they stuck around for a while, if our kids got to know them and so on. So that's progress for sure. Another interesting thing about uh, 30 years ago when it was a six-hour walk-in, everybody grew their own rice, all the neighbors. Mm. And to process it, you had to, you had to hit it with a, in a big heavy wooden thing with a, with a big heavy mallet, you know, to get the, the husk and part of the shell off. It's the women who did that. A lot of work. You know, it was a long ways from the road and rice grew fine. Now, no one grows rice. No one grows their own rice. They buy it? Yeah, sure, they buy it. Is yeah, it, do they buy locally grown rice or imported rice? Mm, well, Ecuador, they grow a lot in Ecuador. Oh, okay. mm. so they have their own rice, that's good. This is not flood rice, uh, flood grown. Yeah, most of it is flood grown in Ecuador. It is? Yeah. Why don't they grow rice anymore? Are they too lazy or is it cheaper to buy it or? Yeah, it's a lot of work to, to grow it is enough work. And then to, to process it is a lot of work too. Yeah. Women quit yeah, we saying, I'm not going to spend half a day pounding rice to yeah. feed my family every day. <laughs> so what's the main crop now in your area? Cacao, corn, bananas. Those are maybe the main ones. Maybe bananas are the most important now. Plantains. Bananas not for, and plantains, yeah. Not for exporting, but just for sending to Quito to, to sell. Are they all small farms or are there big operations yeah, pretty much too? All small farms, yeah. And actually, what's creeping closer is the palm heart plantations, mm -hmm. where they can palms, you know, monocrops of, uh, let's say they're Pedji Valle palms. Mm -hmm. And those are, you know, not, not local people, those are rich people from the city that buy those farms and do that. But still not, right in our area, there's still none of that. Is the corn feed corn or soft sweet corn? Yeah, feed corn. But that feed corn, if you pick it when it's tender on the corn of the cob stage, better than that sweet corn stuff. Not quite as sweet, but yeah, starchy and more flavorful. At least some varieties are better than that. You know, in the Ecuadorian constitution, GMOs are prohibited, and that's pretty much been followed, even though the president, the all-powerful president, is against them. I mean, he wants a GMO, but they've pretty much been able to keep them out.
You know, I'm sure there's some, but not very much, I don't think. I mean, they grow soybeans, and I don't think those are GMOs. Yeah, good for them. There's some good stuff in the Ecuadorian Constitution. First Constitution where nature has some rights, some legal rights. Like what? Uh, you know, I don't know. I haven't read it. But I understand that a couple of people have gone to court about it to, to support nature having rights, you know, of not getting destroyed. You know, it hasn't really. There's a lot of new mining. The president loves mining. But it's in the Constitution, you know, who knows? Maybe something will come of it. Also, the in Ecuador, foreigners, if they have resident visa, if they're living there, can vote. I know of no other country like that. Some interesting things. The president that's been in for 10 years, it's just leaving. Thank goodness, has done a lot of really interesting things, but a bunch of bad things too. I heard there's a lot of retired Americans there. I'm like, what? Do you happen to know like the numbers? How, how many gringos are living in Ecuador? I don't have much of an idea, but I do know that yes, in the past few years, a lot of retired Americans have gone to live in Ecuador. You know, it's a little scary because my impression is most of them are there because it's cheap. You know, primarily because it's cheap. And if people go down without, you know, don't speak Spanish, they're not really so interested in the local culture, they live in communities. I haven't personally experienced any of that, but, but I hope it doesn't keep happening like that. I mean, you know, obviously not all gringos that come down do that. But some are, are they mostly in the big cities or are there Americans out yeah. in the well, no, small towns. Well, mostly in the big cities. Like the the main city that they're in is not just like the third biggest city in the country, and then the other places that there's places are more, you know, semi small towns or out in the country. Or something like that. And then there's some spread all around, like like us. You have how many acres, Jim? There. Or Square miles, um, like or 75 or something. And but a lot of it's just primary forest, which we don't plan on touching. You know, never been touched, basically. How much of it is planted, Jim? Maybe nine hectares or something. How many acres? Fruit. Is that? uh, that's uh, 20? 20, yeah, acres. And the main which trees? is a lot, but it's easy to take care of because it's a forest. I don't have to do anything to it. Wow. No, I don't harvest a lot of fruits from it. That's a lot of work. Oh, okay, yeah. But I don't need to. No. You know, I'm interested in planting these things and getting the, looking at the first generation and seeing which ones do best. And then after that, you know, other people can plant them and I can graft them the best varieties and, and propagate them. I'm just getting past the first generation really now. <clears throat> It was interesting hearing how you um, clear, you cut some of the bigger trees mm -hmm. and you plant your fruit trees and you girdle mm -hmm. the smaller weed trees. Yep. Um, one thing I'm running into here on our farm is the a uh -uh lava is so rugged it's hard to walk anywhere. <laughs> so it seems like dozing it is uh -huh. one of the few ways it makes yeah. it habitable. Do you have any recommendations? You know, I've walked around and oh, I understand mm -hmm. for sure what you're saying. Mm -hmm. No, not really. It's too bad they have to bulldoze it, but, but maybe that's what you got to do. For Otherwise, it's hauling cinder in by hand with a wheelbarrow, oh, yeah. which takes a really yeah. long time. Yeah, do people do that sometimes? Just fill in rather than bulldoze? Or? Yeah, it seems yeah. not practical. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where'd it go? <laughs> In the hole. Huh. What? Okay. I was curious what latitude you're at. Zero degrees, 13 minutes. Really? <laughs> Which is about 13 miles from the equator. North. Oh, you are on the right equator, equator at 500 meters? Yeah. But the climate thing is kind of interesting. There's, uh, there's a thing called the climatic equator where the northern and southern hemisphere weather patterns come right together. And that's, in South America, that's at four degrees north, right oh. through the middle of Colombia. And that's where we lived. And in Colombia, in most of Colombia, 
there's three months dry, three months rainy, three months dry, three months rainy. And in Southeast Asia, there's places like that, too. And it's a nice climate, really. You get two harvests of some things. But once you get very far from that climatic equipment, like about four degrees south like we are, that's kind of disappearing. We get a tiny little bump in October, but mostly it's just we're in the southern hemisphere tropics climatic zone, which means uh, December to May is rainy season, and May to December is dry. <clears throat> so rainy season, does it rain almost every day? Well, we get uh, total rainfall is like 120 inches. That's a lot. And maybe 100 months. of them is in those five months or so. Oh. so it's pretty much. But no, it's not raining all the time. You know, it rains hard in rainy season. No, I mean, you get that much rain here, too, huh, in some places. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know. Sure, more than that in some places around here. Sure, but we don't have a pattern here. It's erratic. Mm -hmm. We don't know when it's going to rain and when yeah. it's not. Yeah, well... There is a pattern. It's yeah, just yeah. not as... Some Decembers are rainy, some Decembers are dry. Mm -hmm. well, it's been getting weird lately, too. Yeah, it's hard to know. It rains more. Much of the tropics, it rains more in the afternoon and evening than during the day. Yeah. You know, there's not very many days where, where you don't go out and work. And dry season, is it like a drought? No. no, it's not. Never dries up in dry season because the sun never comes out. Oh, what? Because of the cold Humboldt current that comes up the South American oh. coast. In dry season, it doesn't rain very much, drizzles sometimes. But not much sun. But it doesn't, yeah, not much so sun and stuff doesn't plants. dry out. So that's and good. what it means is stuff doesn't dry out enough to initiate flowering sometimes. Things like rambutan and durian that really need a dry season to initiate flowering, yeah. they don't get it sometimes. Even though there's six months dry season. Do you have more fruiting in the wet season? In yes. Yes. Because that's a normal time for flowering is dry season or just when dry season is ending. And then it fruits in rainy season. I had some questions about specific plants. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, Dubai you're talking about, the mm -hmm. relative of the peely nut. Um, it's a canarium, huh? Canarium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how how similar to peely is that? I mean, what's the what's the main advantage of growing that instead of peely? I guess. Well, I think it's a little tastier than peely, the pulp. Okay. Well, I like the the, pulp. the outer pulp. Yeah, the outer pulp. Yeah. Dubai. Yeah. And the nut, you know, I don't think I've ever tasted a nut even, but it's probably good, too. It's smaller, for sure, which is a disadvantage. And peelies are super hard uh, to break, yeah. but so are mech nuts. Yeah. <clears throat> and then they're probably like, well, you probably need multiple trees then? Or they, they're they're just... They are dioecious. They are dioecious. Yeah. They're and big do, trees. Do you sell those? Do you sell the seeds for Yeah, those? yeah. Harvest coming up. Um, yeah, they are dioecious. Okay. And big trees, like, kind of similar to Peely, like, like tall, tall and upright, yes. kind of? Yes. Yeah. You know, ideally would be grafting them for sure, or air layering them or something. What's to that? keep them small. Ideal would be keeping them smaller, because oh, okay. sure enough, they're very hard to pick. What would you, um, so you don't just let them fall sometimes and pick them up off the ground, or? Uh, no, I can't remember what they fall like. This is like our second decent harvest ever. Oh, okay. And it hasn't happened yet. Well, I've just done that with peely nuts good before. They fall? But I never, I never really ate the pulp of the peely uh, nuts. Yeah. You, have to, you have to soften it up in warm water, in hot mm -hmm. water, mm -hmm. briefly. But five when the peelies fell, they were like still, you know, black, like uh, ripe when they fell usually. Okay, well, when my peelies fall, usually the, the guatusa will eat them right away. And, yeah, they, I usually pick the peelies. Peelies are smaller trees than the vines. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, I can climb my peely tree pretty well, whereas the vine tree is hard. I'm a long picker. Pulp is good. If you get it at the right stage, it tastes kind of like olive. Oh. Mm, yeah, they do compare it to olive, huh? Yeah. Because it's oily and tasty. You smell it like Dubai in the country? No, I don't think it's named after Dubai. Dabai is the name. D-A-B-A-R. Cool. Certainly not. You won't find any in Dubai. I'm uh -huh. pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> and the the Sacha Ichi, the um, the Incan peanut, mm -hmm. 
Um, do you sell the seeds for those? Yep. Well, and so that's just a vine. It's a vine, very precocious. Starts to flower in a fruit in a year. Oh wow! And that's people are like uh, John Mood over in Hamakula side uh -huh. was planting a bunch of them in processing them. Nice. I I have plants that are growing, and also the the canarium, the Dubai. Yeah, the mm -hmm. Dubai. Yes. And Oh, and then you said the um, there was another one, the um, um, the different Pachira mm -hmm. relative mm -hmm. that was like larger. Yeah, Pachira patinoi is the species that I was talking about, and that I showed the flower of. Uh huh. Yep. That red one was patinoi. Yeah. Seems like uh, there's an Amazonian one too. It has red flowers also. It's kind of similar. In Cygnus. But this one's from it's from the Chocobio region, and again. And you have seed available for that too, or? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's a good nut. Not sure why it's not more often known and eaten. Because the aquatica, Patria aquatica, is more well known. Right. People know about that one. And I was looking at some stuff, and I was a little confused about the what they call Malabar chestnut. Yeah, yeah, that's and what that's there's another one. Aquatica. But like, well, Yeah, that little green one is, is not it. That's something so different. So what is that it's one? It's not even a pachira. It is a... The green one is glabra. No, pachira it's... glabra. Mm. And a lot of people make the mistake and they call that aquatica, but that's wrong. Yeah, I thought it was a different genus. So is it still, it's still edible though, right? Yeah, yeah it's it very is. good. Yeah. Something yeah. peanut, what kind of peanut do they call it? French peanut. French peanut, yeah. yeah. French peanut, yeah, that one's good. called? Yeah. So it's not even Malabar chestnut. Malabar chestnut is the wrong name for it, as it okay. turns yeah. out. But yeah, it's yeah, right. there's a lot of confusion in that Pachira family. Because yeah. they cross easily, too. So a lot, there's a lot of hybrids. Oh, okay. Interesting. So what we call... So Mal does any... But Malabar the Pachiras chestnut? are a lot bigger seeded than the, the French peanut. Right? They're big seeds. The French peanut are the one you can smell. Interesting, because I would like to get like regular, the actual Malabar chestnut. I mean, is it that much different than? Yeah, it's very no, different. No, you ought to get that too. The pod is huge. The nuts are big. Well, then the French peanut, yeah, it's quite yeah. big. Yeah, the pods are this big. Yeah. And do you guys yeah. have those? Then? Yeah, I have a lot of different pachuras. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in mm -hmm. different, different nuts and seeds yeah, and yeah. high high oil stuff. And yeah. They're pretty good raw too, like in salads. Nice. Check out cool. fruitlovers.com. I sell a lot of those seeds through my website. Cool. Awesome. Are you fruitlovers.com? Yeah. Okay. And what's your website? Guaycuyaku. Uh, net. G -U -A -Y. C U A Y C U Y A C U. .net. Yeah. Do you send uh, seeds ever to, like, plant it Hawaii or commercial nurseries who then grow? Yeah. Not, Not to plant it Hawaii, Hawaii, but yeah. commercial nurseries sometimes, yeah. They're not on a big scale, but, mm. but yeah. Yeah, all kinds of different people. There are collectors. People who want to resell the seeds, people who want to grow the plants and sell the plants. So you're doing mostly seedlings and not grafting much? Just recently I've started to graft a lot more. Uh -huh. kind of realized that, you know, now I ought to be doing, you know, I've got some stuff to choose from. Mm -hmm. Nice to have grafted plants, smaller plants. And you know your pets well enough to know what's better yeah, right. root stock and right, what, right. what needs. Yeah, for commercial, it's important. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as there's people out there planting seedlings, too. Yeah. Uh, I remember you had a photo that you showed earlier that had some uh, sapucaia in it. Yeah, what? Sapucaia. The uh, lespis uh, sapucaia, the monkey pot. No. Yeah, you showed one oh, of the Oh, I see. Pod. It had, yeah, it had an old pod in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're not growing out that's just... Yes, but that one's not from... My trees have flowered, but not fruited. Oh, okay. The pod is from somewhere else.
uh, at the same picture, I don't know if I if I saw it correctly, did you also have, uh, I think it's Alan Toma, one of the relatives, it's a small, yeah. more cylindrical? Yeah, yeah. Has that? No. That hasn't either. Okay. <laughs> You're, what altitude there? You're off. 500 on, meters. What? 1,600 uh, feet. 1,600 feet sitting on the equator. Yep. Yeah. You know, normally if you go to like Cali, Colombia, 1,000 meters right on the equator, it's hot in 1,000 meters. And you can certainly grow all the tropicals. 3,000 feet. So 3,300 feet. It's hot, you can grow all the tropicals. Our place is an exception because of the Humboldt current. It's cooler at that altitude. Cooler than it is in Cali at a thousand meters. Because mm -hmm. it's overcast all the time. Not all the time. But. Can I ask you, are you organic? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't baby my plants much at all. Pretty much, yes, organic. I never fertilize. The What I use in my nursery is soil. So I add a little compost sometimes. Not really like a regular nursery, <laughs> where they don't even use soil at all. And the growers in your area, do they use chemical fertilizers? Um, chemical fertilizers, not so much. But if they need to use chemical sprays, they do. It's not that common, just because cacao is really hard to, to control the diseases with sprays. Bananas don't really need it. Cows, they poison their cows sometimes to keep away parasites and stuff. Do you know what they're using for cacao or for the diseases? Well, just cultural control, pretty much. Which means removing the dead pods. Removing the disease pods, rather, so that the fungus doesn't spread. They're fungal diseases, mainly. Two, two very major fungal diseases. Which are not in, I mean, they're not in Hawaii, for instance, which is really nice. Somebody, Easy to grow cacao here. To here <laughs> yeah, that would you know I don't do that. Don't know. I've seen him trying to sell disease pods at the market. Uh, and then I well, the guy and he ran over and bought it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that might be a different disease. I think Phytophthora might be pod. here, but Monilia and Escova de Bruja I don't think are here. So if it's a seed, no, you can still eat the pod. You just can't plant the seeds or shouldn't plant well, the seeds. He was also wanted to plant seeds. Oh, yeah. And so he was like, whatever, it's the only pods in the market. Well, he could weigh and get it some other time. Yeah, he could. Yeah. Yeah. Or no, it was actually, I was selling them, and the woman in the market bought it. And she's, you know, she didn't care. She's just like, a, she's not even a farmer. She's just a merchant. She just wants to buy stuff to sell. So I told her, please tell people that. Turn sure enough, they were gone like an hour. You know, she's not telling anybody. Yeah, I saw a big so it was all ignorant. What's that? I saw a big tray of black black uh, pot like a couple of weeks ago at a farmer's market. Well, they get black if they yeah. sit around long enough. Yeah, uh, these are kind of odd. But it's, yeah, it can devastate the whole, you know, industry. I suspect that those black pods, they're either old or else it's Phytophthora, which is a third fungus disease, not as serious as those two that are common in Ecuador. What's the other one? The, the ones that are common are Monilia and Escoba de Bruja, which is witch's broom disease. No, we don't have that either. Okay, yeah. And Monilia, I bet you don't have either. But I don't know. It affects the pods, for sure. If somebody, somebody who knows about it can tell what kind of fungus disease it is. Um, so it's certainly important. If Monilia came here, it would be a very big deal, for sure. Because people are planting cacao, huh? It's all the rage. Yeah, and and you've got no diseases here. Yeah. You have a list of, say, five or ten plants 